Lesley, uh, you, you mentioned that one of the uh, worst uh, uh, contributors to the uh, climate change is uh, fossil fuel, uh, either industry or users of that fossil fuel. Um, and we all recognize that. But what are the prospects of having an alternative to this fossil fuel? And uh, is it acceptable by industry or the user. How, what is the solution to that fossil fuel issue? Well, of course, this is the really big question because we're talking about a fundamental transformation in our economic system because energy use is at the root of all economic activity. Um, and I'm not an engineer, so we might have to have another panel discussion with specialists in renewable energy. But many experts in the United States, there have been many studies done at MIT and Stanford and many other places that do suggest that the technologies already exist, that we could probably get anywhere from 50 to 80% of current energy uses um, with existing technologies, such as renewables like solar and wind and hydro, possibly nuclear power, although that's obviously controversial, uh, and also energy efficiency. Studies at the Rocky Mountain Institute, some of you maybe have heard of Amy Lovins, who has worked on this issue for many years. He has a new book called Reinventing Fire. He's done a lot of very detailed studies that suggest that in the United States, we could reduce energy use at least 30% uh, just through energy efficiency alone. And that, in a way, should be obvious because if you compare, say, the United States to Germany, the average American uses twice as much energy as the average German, uh, but I've spent time in Germany, and lots of people here have. People in Germany live a good life and eat good food and have warm houses. So we know that it's possible to live a very comfortable life using less energy. So then one question is, why do we waste so much energy? Why do we not use, why are we not more efficient even when we have, already have the existing technology? And so this is one area where I think social science research could be very, very important and helpful. I mean, why do we not use the technologies that we already have? There's a lot of talk about new technology, about breakthrough technologies, and certainly there will be new technologies in the future, and we should be actively seeking those new technologies. But the reality is that we actually have the technology that we need already, but we don't use it. And so then it becomes partly an economic problem. And certainly we have strong evidence right now that a major reason why we continue to use fossil fuels are because they're very cheap and very convenient. When we buy fossil fuels, when we use coal and oil and gas, we don't pay the true price. This gets back to the question of sustainable development. We don't pay the true price because we don't pay for the external costs. We don't pay for the environmental damage. And so this is a major reason why many economists, like Bill Neuhaus at Yale and many other prominent economists, Nicholas Stern, favor a carbon tax, favor an economic remedy to remedy the market failure and put a realistic price on the use of fossil fuels. And many economists believe that if the price of fossil fuels were made to reflect the true cost of carbon, the true social and environmental cost of using carbon, that that would level the playing field and make alternatives like solar and wind more competitive in the marketplace. So the pricing structure is a very important and big part of it. A second important part is subsidies. There's a new World Bank report that just came out on global subsidies to fossil fuel production. In my country, and when I give speeches, I encounter very often people who don't want the government to intervene in the marketplace and don't want the government to subsidize non-fossil fuels because they oppose that in principle, because they think that government interventions in the marketplace are counterproductive. And they use the example of the Soviet Union or Communist China as extreme examples to show you know, how badly wrong things can go when you allow the government to take over the marketplace. But the that argument has a lot of problems, not least of which is it's a reductio ad absurdum. I mean, just because extreme control of the marketplace has been problematic doesn't mean that there aren't more modest interventions that could be reasonable. And we have many successful examples of economies around the globe that have 
various forms of government intervention that are successful. But also, it ignores the fact that fossil fuels are not operating in a free market either because of the enormous subsidies to fossil fuel production. So the latest World Bank report estimates that global subsidies to fossil fuel production are around $500 billion every year, US dollars, $500 billion. Now, in the United States, we've recently bailed out the troubled banks. We have something called the Troubled Asset Recovery Program. The value of this program, TARP, the Troubled Asset Recovery Program, has been estimated at between 500 and 700 billion dollars. So in other words, every year, the world is bailing out the fossil fuel industry. So I like to say that this proves that the fossil fuel industry is a troubled asset. This is actually a very troubled industry, but we hardly ever talk about that. We hardly ever think about it because it's been going on for so long that we take it for granted. But if those subsidies could be removed, that alone, just removing the existing subsidies, would go a very long way to opening up an economic space uh, for renewable energy.